I, I don't know. I, nothing makes sense. It, it doesn't make sense. But, and recently I had come across um, a, a third version of the disclosure package, which some of the contents wasn't given to me during the trial. And a police profiler made an unconformed conclusion about my, me, my character, whatever, based only on the former officer's notes. And this report was concluded at 9, 10 a.m. the next day, several hours after I was released from the police station. I would have been at the hospital around that time. I'm going to read this line. His actions mimic those of a pedophile grooming a child. It's the first time I read it not too long ago. I've never seen that before. Somehow, the story goes from raping or sexually assaulting this female, being a co-accused with a male co-worker, but to that. And over the years, I couldn't understand why all four of the lawyers that I had and the, the Crown Prosecutor's Office and everybody that I talked to, everybody, all treated me like I was a piece of shit. Now I know. That person who made that report never talked to me. Made this conclusion solely based on, and it's very clear in, in the whole document, based on what the former officer stated. This is why all these years I've, I've asked and paid people very well to, to help me and because this is what they're thinking. An uninform, uninformed conclusion based on other uninformed conclusions and assumptions. They all based on a lie. People's opinions change. People's perceptions change. People's beliefs change. People's wants and desires change. People's theories change. People's life circumstances change. Everything changes. However, the liberal arts, theoretical pseudoscience of psychology, with their, for example, psychometric testing, as well as, for example, police profiling and the criminal justice system, locks in or attempts to lock in people into who they think they are based on their limited knowledge base. Hello, it's April 2022, and I want to briefly talk about something I've talked about extensively, especially in uh, recent videos. And that has to do with the liberal arts, theoretical pseudoscience of psychology. I specifically want to talk about profiling. And this video is inspired by a conversation that I recently had with someone who had to partake in testing. And there was a group of them, uh, a large group, who had to answer a bunch of questions and they apparently marked their own test, if you want to call it that, to determine type of character. Now, I guess for the from the company's perspective, it was, you know, how do you deal with different types of people? And we all know there's different types of people. Now, what was interesting with regards to this particular testing, well, this person still had their test results and, and the, the booklet of questions. And I kind of briefly went through the questions and I found it really interesting. And I remember studying about this type of stuff before and everything else and whatever, but that's a different tangent. And I guess at the end, when they were done, they were broken up into the four different types of groups that this test was allegedly trying to highlight. Now, for this person, they tested, they came out as, I can't remember if it was a, like a sociopath or a psychopath, it doesn't really matter. They kind of overlap. There is a difference between them and that's not what this video is about. Now, what I really wanna highlight here is how this type of nonsense, and I'll explain in a, 
moment, what I mean by nonsense, can really gaslight someone, uh, manipulate them, and even perhaps create false memories. And people build an identity around something like this because they accept you know, this as some sort of authority it has to be true. Now, one of the things that I highlight, and this ties in with the nonsense part, is interpretation. What uh, somebody might deem or society might deem today as strength of character, say 50 years ago, would be a weakness in character. Now, I want to take, for example, you take someone who is uh, driven, who is, um, uh, I'm just trying to think of a word, confident is, is another thing, who is very assertive, who takes control. Now, in the corporate world, for example, that these are good traits. And in today's world where we see all the social justice, safe places and feelings and everything else, that type of character would be deemed through interpretation as a bad thing. Now, when you look at these questions, and there was, I forget, there was a lot of questions, and there was two answers. Now, the two answers when you, if you don't know what you're looking for may seem kind of remote from each other. And what they would do is they would take uh, the question or the answers and mix them up throughout and everything else. Where the problem is, the interpretation and for example deeming someone a sociopath or a psychopath and I guess there was two groups in the middle that were the majority and then there was these other two groups and this individual was the only person that ended up in this uh, other group now apparently the person who was conducting it was saying there's nothing wrong with being a sociopath psychopath whatever and that's, again, a different tangent. But just imagine someone, when they're younger, accepting this. Now they're building their whole identity around this, and they believe it. What do you think happens? Their personal view on themselves changes, and they begin to gaslight themselves. And this is a very big problem with this liberal arts, theoretical pseudoscience of psychology, where most of it's just made up nonsense. And when you look at the DSM series of books, I mean, they're taking things out, putting things in, just making things up. And when you look at the number of uh, pages in the first version, compare that to the latest version, I mean, it just skyrockets. Again, it's just all made up stuff. But yet, this is what society blindly accepts as, you know, well, somebody smart must have figured it out. No. Somebody just decided to put stuff in print and then present it as factual. So, that applies, you know, I'm using an example of an individual. But now, let's talk about having something like that for groups, society, civilization overall. And we have a problem where people on a large scale are being gaslit to believe, accept who they are. And then there's all these tangents that come from that, say, for example, with an individual where they start to, uh, it affects other parts of their character, perhaps even their life, because how they, how someone views themselves will reflect outwards. And this type of thing is a very, very dangerous weapon. This whole profiling thing, uh, for example, of accused people, again, it's nonsense. And I've used an example with my case where some, oh, I'm going to be polite here, person had made some sort of conclusions about uh, who I am. And everyone just went along with it. They put their opinion based on who knows what in print. And everyone just kind of went along with it, discrediting me. Now, 
why all this and everything else again that's a different tangent but it's just all nonsense and I've talked about where somebody accused may eventually believe that they say for example committed a crime and then we now tie into the studies made famous by Julia Shaw and how implanting false memories and false memories false identities create some sort of illusion and we hear a lot of people talking about for example you know we live in the matrix well we live in a real world it's not the matrix as in the movie where it's all simulated the matrix is in within the mind and false memories with regards to history worldwide events on any topic everything else that old saying the whole world's a stage and there's um proper answer to that we're all actors here there's a proper answer to that for those in the know and I just want to really, really want to highlight how dangerous the liberal arts the theoretical pseudoscience of psychology is now I do reference people in that profession like uh, Julia Shaw and others with false memories and stuff observation is not and, and sp sorry speculation of observation is not science, it's pseudoscience. When you're speculating. We can observe, for example, human behavior and predict human behavior. Then everything else is just all made up stuff. So there's an element of some truth there, but the rest is just all made up stuff. And I've said many times before where practical sciences have been confused with liberal arts theoretical pseudosciences on any topic and unfortunately the latter has been accepted as factual by societies everywhere so just be very mindful perhaps this could be even a warning just because someone for example in a lab coat says something doesn't mean it's factual and chances are it's not you know and just be very mindful of that because you don't want to find yourself going down a path and then years later going, well, who am I really? Because you may know something that's not jiving with what you, maybe you were told, for example, with this type of testing. And you, you look back on your life and perhaps even have to reinvent yourself to who you truly are. Anyway, that's all I really want to say. For whatever it's worth, take what you will from it. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it. You're never going to outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. I hear people saying to me all the time, when is it going to get easier? When you die.